All right, so today we have another look at uh, our good friend, Dr. Laurie. I'm sure people who have seen my previous videos on this know exactly what we're getting into here. So uh, this is a video that was posted earlier today. I have not watched it yet. It's 15 minutes long. And um, I have this open on Watch Together because uh, I am not going to be going through this on my own. I have uh, Karen Boker with me again. Hi. Uh, if uh, you've never seen it, we... Uh, I did an interview with her a while ago. Uh, she's been in the hobby pretty much since the beginning, uh, works with the Price Guide website, and uh, is uh, one of the most knowledgeable experts you can talk to about Beanie Babies. So uh, we're going to be going through this video and basically uh, figuring out what in here is accurate and what isn't. And uh, I'm expecting to get angry, but uh, I'll wait until it happens. So uh, let's get right into this, I suppose. Dr. Lori, and I know that you know to come to me when you have questions about Beanie Baby. So I wanted to do this video about why are Beanie Baby so valuable? How does this actually work? Two seconds, <laughs> and I'm As already angry. Look, there's a surgeon, Nana. You know what to look for. Wait, was okay, there? So a couple of things that I want that, to isn't shoot. that from her other and video? And then I'm going to talk about why this became really okay. Hold on, I need to. Sure. So is it first pausing? of all, when you're looking at Beanie Babies, I want <sighs> you to look for. Can uh, I hit pause. <laughs> I have to juggle the full screen here. Okay, what was there actually a third gen in there, or were you talking about the There's a third video? gen, yeah, uh, Bongo, and I think that's from her one of her prior videos. Okay, hold on. If that's actually the case, I need to see that. It's valuable. How does this act? Let's it's coming see. up. It's right actually in the bottom work. right corner. There yeah. it is. Oh, what in the world? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, that actually concerns me because that was not her collection in that video that was somebody else's yeah but isn't that the picture from that other video i mean i'd have to see inside the tag to see if it has the same writing inside it well she it's doesn't a, show the tag yeah that's a it's a gen 3 it's yeah okay i'm glad you spotted that i wasn't looking that closely i'm looking if there's anything else on here that stands out yeah so far, i didn't know i didn't notice this. anything i only noticed the bongo nana but i think it's the nana from that other video that is concerning. Okay, let's go. Now, on. as the expert in this, I want you to know what to look for, okay? So, a couple of things that I want you to know right out of the shoot, and then I'm going to talk about why this became really important in our culture. So, a couple of things. First of all, when you're looking at Beanie Babies, I want you to look for condition, condition, condition. Yeah, That's going to be important. I know you know, you. this is Fleece, for example, the little lamb uh, Beanie Baby, the and and a lot of elements oh, that are going to be important got a about the tags, protector the errors, which errors really are valuable and which Okay, well, uh, what's the issue with the sleeve? Okay, the sleeve protectors... Let me go back and zoom in on that, but okay. go ahead. Okay, the sleeve protectors, see how it it punches Oh, she's got the, the red part bent inside it? It bends, it bends the tag up there, and it causes creases. Um, there's some other issues that have popped up with those um, over the years. I can't remember what, like melting to the tag, I've heard. Mm. But you always want to use those, um, the ones that have that little raised well, like the BTP, where the BTP is raised. Yeah. Um, it won't crease your tag. Those are the ones that everybody loves. And then the second one is the ones with the heart, where a heart is raised. These are the worst ones you can get. I have a bunch of these, but when I put them on, I don't cover the whole thing. I I do I kind of like do up, up to the hole. And yeah, then... and yet you can cut them up there in that corner too. That helps. Yeah, but um, I guess it should also be stated that uh, like there's better options than these, and these are okay on beanies that aren't worth that much. But it's like you want to keep them in decent condition, but you're not worried about them being like museum quality necessarily. And right. this is a beanie that does not need to be museum quality because right. it's three dollars. So, right. but I mean, I know she says later that it's not, but yeah, this is this is a Gen Four. This is and it's actually, I believe, the trending price on Fleece when I checked was like four fifty nine. It's gone up a couple bucks. Mm -hmm. All right, let's. Uh, because of all the hype. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get back. The errors, which errors really are valuable and which are really not all that valuable and are actually pretty common. And also, she doesn't I actually think explain about that, does those she? that are going to be no. very desirable in the market, like those that relate to history, the Princess Diana Beanie Baby. I like the mug with history, her face. Valuable into the thousands, well, regularly sells pretty well. Okay, also, let's stop there. <laughs> I knew that because you, you mentioned her meant saying that before, and I, I knew yeah. it was coming up. Okay, so Princess sells into the thousands regularly. No, it doesn't. No, no, it definitely doesn't. 
So, does she get into Princess in more detail later on? Uh, I believe she does. Okay, maybe we'll wait until that, because this is one that I always talk about when I do these videos, and it's like, I, I've explained this one probably a good five times, I think, because it's just, it's not even that complicated of a beanie. No, it's, it's not. It's just, it's like, you, you look for the same things that you do on most things, plus a little bit extra, and mm -hmm. it's... The one that's considered the rarest, the, like, the Indo-Canadian uh, PVC, or possibly right. even just PVC Canadian in general. Um, how high does that typically go? Like, maybe 200s? Well, and see, the thing is, it's not even doing that right now, because BB Toy Store um, had got a whole bunch of them in, and he's been selling for, like, 80, 85. Hmm. So, I mean, I've lowered the price over there on the uh, website. Yeah, I've had no need in... There's been no changes. Yeah, like I said, we'll go into more on this one later, probably. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I have. I know you can't see it, but uh, I'm showing the price guide website. So we've got oh, okay. the the most the most valuable version. Yeah, currently listed eighty to two fifteen. Like you're gonna see a range because some people don't know what they're buying. Some and people... you have them authenticated. That seems yeah. to be the big difference. But yeah, it's like w when it's just a standard princess it's no rarer than any other gen 5 it's exactly. like five bucks let's see here we have the pe china yeah three to 18 and the 18 is usually people who think it's something more than it is right anyway moving on it's pretty well oh, also you want to go ahead i was just going to say that a lot of it is the flippers um they buy on these online auction sites they buy in person auction sites and they're the ones who are paying 50 100 bucks for these things and then they get pissy when they find out that it you know they made a mistake yeah because it's so. they spend all this money thinking they can sell it for higher and nobody wants yeah. it because it's common and then it's everybody else's fault yeah, but theirs yeah I'll look for some of the beanie babies that have political connections like lefty and righty also mm -hmm. can be mm -hmm. when sold in us in a group into the thousands so but a oh of things that I want you to understand oh okay <laughs> Now, those were the lefty and righty 2004, right? Yeah, those aren't even the 19, what, 96 ones? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me show those. So, yeah, there's, I'll, I'll pull these up on the site also. Oh, um, yeah, because, yeah, lefty and righty, you've got the donkey and the elephant. Uh, the original ones were uh, some of the original Gen 4s from uh, June 96. They were out for about six months, retired beginning of 1997. Uh, and those were part of that batch that uh, back when the craze first started, uh, these did sell for 100, 200 bucks mm -hmm. until more time passed and people kind of started realizing that they weren't that rare and demand in general went down and all that. But it's like, that's not even the one that she's showing. <laughs> no, she's showing the, the most recent version that they did, right? That's, yeah, 2004. There was, uh, it looks like there was also an 08. Uh, oh, that was a 2.0, I guess. I don't know much of those yeah. later ones, but yeah, it's like I, I I've seen I've seen the Lefty 2000 show up on a lot of those like clickbait lists because there were like two of them that were signed by Hillary Clinton, and so well, therefore, obviously, they must all be rare because people don't know how to read. And it's so. actually only one that was signed by her. Hmm. Um, yeah, and somebody has tried to counterfeit them. We know that. Um, forge her signatures what they're doing but there was also the 2000 lefty righty convention the gore versus, versus bush one i think i've seen those they had like that yeah tag attached. and um that set can go gosh i think around 125 dollars something oh. like that and they still do in a in an election year um during other times they might go for 90 85 um but they do but uh either way Definitely not thousands. That is no. Yeah. So yeah, the originals. Those are what, like ten bucks now. Yeah, something like that. Because they they used to be so much more, but yeah, it's like now now people just anything that's a Gen Four. It's like you you get some people who claim that everything under the sun is worth thousands, and then you get the ones who are like, oh, if it has a star on the tag, it's two bucks. And it's like there's, yeah, there's I mean, a little more finesse than the last convention ones that I can find have gone all the way down to $20 for a set yeah. on January 26th. So they have to be sold right at the right time to get the money for them. Yeah, and I think that's something that she's getting into is like if you're into selling, then like you kind of have to know when, 
like strike when the iron's hot like yeah. sell around yeah. holidays and that makes sense she's right but it doesn't it's, change the price from a dollar to uh, up to a thousand, thousand dollars. yeah that's that's a little hopeful yeah all right um, moving on we're never gonna get through this video are we <laughs> but that's yeah, we okay Right. into the thousands so but a couple of things that i want you to understand because i always tell you that art reflects society collectibles reflect society if you have a historical connection to a piece it always relates to that particular time when it was introduced so you've and got the 1990s go. and here's what's happening in the 1990s and here's why beanie babies become so valuable mm. well in the 1990s yeah. you have a real dark period you have a oh, period do we? of in fact a lot of turmoil you have a period where you have a lot of gun violence. You have a period Weren't where the you 90s have a lot like of crime. You have the this is the period when Mary Jo Buttafuoco, for example, oh, is yeah, you... shot with a gun. <laughs> you were telling me about this, yeah. Steps of her own home on Long Island. Oh, just Island. wait, just wait. You have an op a time when, of course, the OJ trial is going on. With, with <laughs> oh yes, yeah, a national Your tragedy. The OJ trial in 1995. You have the 90s that are also the time of the Rodney King riot. She's comparing um, Rodney as King a result, now. To me. Of course, of that particular event, you've got a lot going on that's really dark, tumultuous, and frightening in the 90s. Of course, you know, between the Cold War ending and the start of 9/11, it was such mm -hmm. a dark period. Like, I can't think of a time worse than the 90s. Like, what I are you so going on about? Yeah, like, I know so many people who love that. I love the 90s. <laughs> like, I was a kid during the 90s, and it's like, I'm not, I don't know much about history in general and, like, politics. But, like, no, the 90s were not a terrible time. What are you talking no. about? It's like, like, bad stuff happens every decade. <laughs> Good Lord. 1990s. <laughs> Beanie Babies become important in this time period as a time when you're starting to see a lot of things changing. What, the is rise it, escapism? of the internet becomes important, of course, for Beanie Babies and why they become so collectible. That's internet true. business and this idea of entrepreneurship, where even little kids think they can be business people, uh, be entrepreneurs at this particular time. Beanie Babies follows a couple of things that relate oh, to history, God, I see and she this has is Pokemon why they're valuable there. and collectible, and this oh, is no. why people held on to them even today. Let's so many evaluations that, that I do on Beanie around, Babies break off. that people will have tubs and tubs of them that they kept since the 90s. This is why. A couple of other things. They're marketing directly to kids, just like the Mickey Mouse Watch did, just like Ingersoll and the Walt Disney Company when no. they came together and they basically said, we're going to make Mickey Mouse Watches in 1936 and we're going to basically make them and we're going to market to kids. That's what Ty Warner did too. Marketed no. to kids. Okay. okay. I, I pause this. Go ahead. Ty never marketed these to kids. He, he, I mean, they were made for kids. But the, what, I mean, that's the thing. Like he, he, part of the idea was they're supposed to be able to be bought with allowance money, right? That exactly. But what drove the market was those Chicago soccer moms. There, you, your be, you know, Becky, Becky, Peggy. All, I mean, it's just that's what drove the market was the secondary. Right. It, it had nothing to do with Ty because Ty never advertised. He didn't market these. Things. Yeah, they, he didn't have commercials, did he? No, nothing. I think the first commercial was the the teenies in '97. Maybe. Yeah, that's probably the only one he ever had. But yeah, he didn't. So, okay. I'll start but, um, there. No, that's okay. Um, But uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and show this now. We'll probably be cutting back to it later. But um, I've got a uh, I've got a timeline that I've just kind of made on my own time here. And um, okay. I want, like, I've shown it to you. Um, mm -hmm. I might have a link to this in the video. It, I, I don't know yet. Because, like, that's fine. it's a... Uh, this isn't officially approved by anybody. There's probably right. stuff in here that's, like, not 100% accurate, but I did my best to kind of track everything. Okay. And so, like, the Beanies, like, the first release of them was November 1993. And then if I kind of just show on the chart here, like, when they started kind of taking off publicly, it was, like, April 97, mm -hmm. the teeny promotion. Like, they were steadily increasing before that. Yes. But, like, even... That's when it was a mania. Yeah, the mania started April 97. I got oh. into it, like, late 96, and I had I had heard of them, like, a month or two beforehand. But, yeah, it's, like, it's really Gen 4 onwards that are the ones everybody has. And so, I know that you said that you, you found, like, the Old Face Teddies in late 94. Yes. Um, and, like, when did... 
that it was right after Thanksgiving of 1994 because I was in the hospital having a surgery and yeah and I had my dad uh, brought me up one and then um, as soon as I could I went down to the hospital gift shop and that's where they were and so like Royal, um, Royal City Hospital <laughs> and so when, when do you think uh, again going back to Becky and Becky and Peggy and Peggy like when did all that stuff start like when did they start like really deeply documenting everything like 95 ish maybe like becky will say it's earlier earlier i think but i swear it was more like 96 hmm. I, I i don't know if i had enough if i was necessarily making a point here but i just i like she's going in about how how like this is important because it's with the rise of the internet and that is true that but, is true. uh like the Thai website launched alongside the Gen 4 tag in summer 96. And that was when you started really getting documentation of like, okay, we're going to announce this batch that's going to be, that's going to be released now. These ones are getting retired, all that stuff. And so everything was like easily tracked at that point onwards. Right. Whereas before that, nobody cared because they were just random toys that were no different than any other toy on the shelf. And so when she's talking about the people who have these bins of ones that they collected and stored for 20 years, it's the ones from Gen 4 onwards because that's right. when people got them. That's right. And so when you have all of these people having all of these bins of beanies, they're not worth anything because there's too many of them. So yeah. it's like, like she's kind of just like she's making sense, but then not addressing like the consequences of that. Right. It's not a new concept, but basically that idea Hold of marketing. On. What's not a new concept? I, I missed something. Marketing to kids. Basically, basically okay. that idea of marketing to kids was important because kids could be at a countertop, you know, a counter where mom or dad were paying for a particular item and a beanie baby would be sitting there on the counter in a store, in a gift shop, in uh, grocery stores, these kinds of places, and a kid could pay with his or her own allowance. These are the kids of the 90s. These are the kids who grow up in minivans, getting, of course, driven from soccer practice to dance recital to another place to, you know, your brother's baseball game. These kids, it's sort of the driving minivan culture. What? And these kids are basically <laughs> what does that even mean? like McDonald's, <laughs> where, know. of course, Beanie Babies could be gotten in their newly introduced Happy Meal. Beanie Babies become collectible for this particular reason. It's really important because parents want to be friends with kids. So it is an opportunity for parents to collect the same thing that their kids are collecting and for parents and even grandparents to collect what kids are collecting. So that is sort of true in my case, at least. My family didn't collect them along with me, but like when, when the beanie craze hit, I was eight years old and I yeah. had almost 200 of them by the time that I stopped in like late 1999. and. I didn't have my own money I was spending on them. I would just ask for, like, I, I would keep track of which ones I still needed, and, like, they would look for them for me. It right. kind of became, like, a family thing. So, right. like, again, I don't think that's what Ty was going for, but it's not wrong. It's not like on cards that adults were not collecting. It's not like these other things that adults were not collecting. Adults were collecting the Beanie Babies too, and this is why it's I like Yogi so Bear giving her that side go, go, go. That's why. That's why they became so valuable. Trying to get the same not thing, why. the market uh. value is going to go up. This is why Beanie Babies have become so valuable, collectible, and sought after today. So. You know, the violence that's happening is basically we're turning the back on that for a traditional toy, a stuffed animal. It's cute. It's got a cute little name, has a little tag, tells you that it's collectible. So if you oh. didn't realize you should collect it, you can collect it, this kind of thing. So <laughs> while they market to kids, they basically are looking at the, 19, the 1990s as a time of change. Well, the I like this 1990s banner that was known important as to historians show. as the American century. It's the end of this particular time when America was at its peak. It's coming in after a time when you're seeing, in fact, a lot of people are getting a little concerned about what's going to happen when the new millennium comes. What's going to happen in 1999 on New Year's Eve when, you know, everything changes? We had a big fear then that all the computers you're getting off crashed, so, You're getting off topic, Lori. Go out, that nothing mm. would Th this work. is not what we need and to know about. That became extremely important as, have, as a tenant of the 1990s, the way in which we kind of lived through that decade. 
that decade also, as I said, had this interest in people starting businesses and even kids starting How businesses. long does she talk about These this? These kids grew up in the McMansions. They grew up with particular <laughs> wealth. They grew up with some privilege, many of them. And you also see that a lot of people who were collecting Beanie Babies were trying to collect different ones. There's the third Which ones again. were they collecting? Mm -hmm. They wanted that happy traditional toy that they could buy for themselves, but they also wanted to have a lot of them. So excess was the thing. It comes out of the late 1980s. We see it in art. We see it in music. We see it in a lot of our cultural pathways for the most part. So which this ones is just are a bunch of valuable? nothing. Which ones should you have to, if you have them today? No, it's coming now. Okay. Historical ones, like the Princess Diana uh, Beanie Baby. She's purple. She's a bear. The bears, in general, are usually more valuable. The Princess Diana Beanie Baby. Okay, now hold on. That, oh, oh crap, I jumped back. I didn't mean to do that. I always notice that, that the bears always seem to go for more, like, just with collectors. And I never really got why, like... Cause it's... Let's see, it's it's funny because when I do the price guide, one of the things that I've always, that I've noticed is that, with the exception of like peace and you know the old face teddies, new face teddies, the dogs they seem to do better, and the cats seem to do better hmm. than the bear, than the later made bears. So I don't know. It's um... I always felt there were way too many of the bears. Like they they just got overboard with them and. Uh, they stopped being interesting but that's uh, possible. i don't know th but that's the thing though is like you always see people post these collections and they've got like 200 of just the bears and i know i definitely remember as a kid in the 90s um when i was trying to collect the new ones the bears were usually the last ones that i would get just because they always get bought up so quickly um and the old magazines and stuff usually had those listed a little bit higher like it would be the new releases or like maybe 15 to 20 dollars and then the bears would be like up to 50 up until it kind of leveled out a bit she's purple she's a bear the bears in general are usually more valuable the princess diana beanie baby of course she has a terrible and very untimely early death in 1997 and the beanie course, itself had an untimely death <laughs> She dies with a couple of other people in that particular car crash. She dies at the hospital after um, she's taken from the wreckage scene. And the big why are we talking Diana about this? Baby I think she, it's like she's trying to hype it. And a lot of people were doing as well with giving to a charity. So it was for the Princess Diana Memorial Fund. It has a white rose on it. Has to have its original ribbon around the neck. And you have to make sure that the pellets are correct. What does it mean? <laughs> the pellets are correct. Different pellets I don't know. What does it mean? Manufacture these Beanie Babies, PVC pellets, PE pellets, and also where they're made will have an impact on value. Is, are they made in Indonesia? Are they made in China? Told you she's been reading a little bit. Yeah, a little. I'm going to talk about tags in depth in a minute. So basically you <laughs> oh, have to think depth, about I'm those sure. historical objects. It's Dramatic best zoom. to sell your Princess Diana Beanie Baby around the time of the anniversary of her death on August 31st of each year. Again, the purple usually relates to royalty, which is why purple was chosen for, of course, her. That doesn't purple matter. Purple also relates to that idea of, of course, someone You have 15 minutes. You're putting so in so much that fluff. That was the, the choice for uh, the Princess ah, she's got to get those Beanie YouTube Baby. views. Unlike other Beanie Babies, if you open up the hang tag of the Princess Diana Beanie Baby, there is no date on the hang tag there, <laughs> no birth date there, as there would be for other Beanie Babies. Okay. Only a poem that relates to, of course, her beauty, her majesty, and, of course, the fact that she wanted and cared about people. You know, the people's princess, as she was. Okay. Called. That's an important one, and oftentimes will sell in very high numbers. You can see them selling in very high numbers. What other ones are valuable? Okay, so we're it's done so talking about princess, so let, let's review. So... Yeah. So she said that the pellets matter and the location matter, and they do. On that yeah. one per specifically, they do. I don't know why she felt the need to point out that it didn't have a birthday. That yeah, has I don't no relevance to anything. Yeah, I don't understand that either. I think she just goes, I think she, it's kind of like, you know, with the heirs where people just notice something and then they make a deal about it. Yeah. Extra space before the exclamation point in the poem. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I guess just to, I'll give my basic rundown of this one again, and you can jump in if there's anything worth saying about it that I don't cover. Okay. So um, I'll show my timeline on screen. So Princess was first introduced, uh, introduced being the key word. Uh, I think it was October 29th of 97. 
Right. But uh, that was just when it was like mentioned as like right. this is going to be a thing. The first time it showed right. up was in December, right? Correct. So we got December '97. Um, it was right at the change between the tag generations. And that's each and retailer that, and it was high, higher level retailers or something like that. To, uh, um, they only got a dozen bags. Here's where Francesca is. So yeah, so yeah, it was uh, bec because that was the thing. Like they kind of had to rush that one because it was yeah. like, oh well, she died. We got to make this memorial piece. Right. So we kind of have to really increase production on this one and then just kind of ship it out. And so it had that low first production where every store only got 12 of them and then um i i marked this on my chart like there was a bit of a gap before it kind of started showing up in stores again right yes and so um in between that gap there was the thing with uh greenpeace was b getting around to all the toy companies saying that pvc plastic is dangerous and ty agreed to change to the pe pellets uh yeah. february of 98 and so Princess didn't come back into circulation until after that switch. And so that's why on that particular one, the PVC matters, because it was that first limited batch. Right. And, um, again, I know you can't see it, but in my chart here, um, uh, the very next batch that came out, you've got Britannia, uh, like all these ones listed on here. Um, they came out uh, very shortly after Princess did. They were announced... Uh, New Year's Eve of 97 and then started showing up in stores like in January and those also started with PVC and then changed pretty shortly after right. but because they didn't have such a limited original release the PVCs of those like they're less common than the PEs but not by very much gotcha just like that, that's why I'm just ba I'm basically just trying to say like if you look at the timing like, that's why this one matters. And then people might be like, well, why don't these matter? These are so close. And that's why. It's because they didn't have that rushed release. They've probably been making a stockpile of these for months beforehand before right. they announced them. Right. And so, like, I have my collection. I've got, like, one of each. And I think out of these 11, I think, like, four of mine happen to be PVC just through chance, me picking them up at the thrift store that way. They're not that rare. And so that's why... It's just, it's so annoying when people who don't really know the hobby very well latch onto the PVC as just this end all. If it has this, it has to be rare. And it's and not. And it, it only applies to one beanie out of like the 3,000 that exist. Exactly. And it's, yeah, it's just like that. That's just one of those rumors that needs to die and it's just, it's never going to go away. You no, cannot beat not. it out of people. Mm -mm. Because, like, all the older ones, the Gen 1, 2, 3, those have PVC, but that's not right. what makes them rare. It's That's just kind of, like, a detail that they happen to have. Right. Um, it annoys me. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things. It's, like, there, there's a lot to, that goes into the hobby, and I cannot fault people for not knowing all of it, but when they latch on to the dumb stuff and then refuse to let go of it when they're shown otherwise, that's when it gets annoying. That's when it, you're absolutely right. That's the most annoying part of it. Um, it. And the other one is getting called rude by all these people. Mm, yeah, because it's... That, we're not rude. We're, we're trying to help. But then if they don't get the answer that they want, we're rude. Right. Yeah, it's like they post all their stuff like, hey, I found this old collection. I heard that they could be rare. How much are they? And it's like, well, they're all five or less. And they're like, well, why are you being so mean to me? Like, we're not. Right. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> like, right, right. You're but... so rude and so mean. And oh, my God. <sighs> all right. So what do we got after Princess? I, I, I want to hear why Fleece is worth $1,000. Horrible ones I said, like the political ones, lefty and righty. The donkey and, of course, the elephant coming together for the American political <clears throat> year. What's that 20, bear? Is that another 2000, treasure? 2000, 1996, no, 2004, voice. 2008, when, of course, Beanie Babies are making these particular an stuffed animals for the political time period. When are they more valuable? They're more valuable, of course, during an election year. So if you have them, you want to sell them during an election year or hold them until then. She what is right about that. What makes Beanie Baby so valuable? It has to do with, of course, the pellets. Whether or oh, not the course. pellets or the construction of the materials will actually deteriorate. Oh. So, you can tell that if you see a lot of creasing in your Beanie Baby. You want to be aware <laughs> oh, of that. No. The other what thing the you hell? want to be aware of with respect
fabric to the Beanie it's, Babies are it's a the floppy piece of fabric and it's the going errors. to Look, have folds and there are a lot of errors on a lot of these Beanie Babies actually okay well I, I, apparently she's talking about errors now but yeah let's let's take a step back again there so that that's a, that's another common trend in these videos where she talks about how much the condition matters and it's like it does but not in the way that she's saying I know and it it's the tags yeah. they want you know you want to have very clean nice beanie and then the tags for a collector that is so important it's just as important as the condition of the beanies and i do understand where she's coming with the pvc versus pe because there was a lot of information put out about pvc pellets uh oh gosh back in the late 90s like you know you know about some of it and it was emitting all kinds of gases at some canadian landfill is the way that i remember it mm -hmm. so that's you know part of why they switched to pe because they're supposedly toxic. And one of the things that people have come out and said is that uh, the, the PVC will deteriorate. Okay, if that's the case, then why are there still PVC shower curtains from the 1950s? Right. I mean, and that's the thing is like, pl like part of the big issues with like not to get into totally different subjects here, but it's like part of the issue with like pollution and you know, global warming and stuff is just right. because plastic doesn't break down. It takes like thousands of years. And right. like you're telling, she's trying to say that like in the 20 odd years since this beanie coming out and today, somehow these plastic pellets have released gases and broken down and in broken such a, down. in such a like noticeable way that the beanie has become like floppier. Yeah. Which makes no <laughs> yeah. sense. You put it and, very well, thank you. Yeah. And so, it, and and then that's the thing is like, if that's happening, how do you stop it? How do you store the beanie to protect the the plastic? Like, what what is your recommendation for this? Like, Freeze them. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, and the thing is, like, aside from the the fact that they're handmade, they don't all have an exactly equal amount of stuffing in them, all that stuff. Like, I mean, I have enough old janky beanies in my collection to know that, like, if a kid plays with them and roughhouses with them, like, they do kind of get floppy and, mm -hmm. like, they don't hold up as well. And I get that. But that's, and, and that does matter, but that's not going to happen because of the plastic. Mm -mm. And, yeah, I don't know what she was saying about creased fabric. Like The wrinkles in the fabric is what I'm, that's the only thing. Fabric has creases in it. I mean, I, see, this is where I think she's been reading and she's applying the word creased to the wrong thing. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I've seen creases on tush tags that are also, like, I know those aren't as bad as the one on the hang tag, but, uh, right. like, I don't know what you do about those necessarily other than, like, maybe hold it between a book for a while, but, uh, yeah, I don't think you can crease the, the fabric. I don't think that's a thing that happens. Mm-mm. <laughs> Not that I'm All right. Hopefully, error beanie babies will, in fact, some of these errors are quite common. The two eyes in original, a common error. Thank and you. a lot of people out there are trying to tell you, oh, well, they're not that common. Well, in fact, a lot of the errors are common, but some of the errors actually are pretty rare, and yes. you have to look for those. So. Some of the things I want you to think about with respect to why Beanie Babies are so is that all she says? is in fact yes. the bears. Okay. So a lot of them are different bears. And you'll have, see, of course, Sammy the bear who's on his, his belly and Blackie the bear, one of the original Lanine who's no, it's on not. his belly. But some of the bears that sit up, like Garcia, of course, named for Jerry Garcia. Did she just and say was Blackie legal, was an original Yeah, she did. For that particular Beanie Bear, Beanie Baby Bear. And also you'll see the Peace Bear. Uh, you'll see Valentino and Valentina, also collectible. And then you'll see a lot of the other types of bears, like Fuzz, like Curly, traditional bears. Okay, where it comes do we to have a point? Bear idea. You have to look at these particular ones, and you have to think about those as being desirable. Why I are see they Valentino so is only the desirable so if it's second or third gen. Nine. Oh, I paused on another Oh, we're going face. to the original nine next. Okay, I guess before we get into that, well, hold on, let me get off of this face. A lot of people. Um, so. <laughs> look at the face you paused on. I know it was pretty good. Um. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sorry, Laura. I'm not making fun of your face. It was just a, it was just an unfortunate pause. But okay, um, yeah, I, I 
I do not understand the Valentino thing at all. I don't get why people think that one's rare. Like, I think, like, you know, Valentino, back in the day, we were selling those for 2500 bucks, And I'm talking about the second gens. Um, they enough. were really hard to find. There were a lot of counterfeits of that tag. I don't know why. Um, but if you got a really nice example of a Valentino, you could sell it for some good money. If and it's I Gen 2. If it's Gen yeah, 2. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. But if I'm, it's, I'm noticing it's, she has still never mentioned a single thing about tag generations. She doesn't. What a shock. She doesn't. Um, but, you know, and Gen 3 has gone up quite a bit, in my opinion. The Gen um, 3 ones can be like 100 or 200, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. There's Those Gen have trying to gone find back up the, a little bit. For the video. But you get to Gen 4, and I mean, unless you're like a specialty collector and you get like a, you know, a Korean one. Well, you know me, I'm nuts about the Korean, so I would pay a little bit more for them. But that Those doesn't like mean 40, somebody else 50. will. Yeah, I'd probably pay 50 for one, 40, 50. But the, but the thing is, is how many people are out there like me? There, it's such yeah, a small niche many. within the hobby. So, yeah, let's actually take a second here then um, and really establish what some of this stuff means. I, I assume some people watching this are going to be familiar with my other videos. They're going to know what I mean with generations, and some people won't, and that's fine. So, right. Um, with the generations, because, because she never mentions them in the video... Um, like, these really just track how old the beanie actually is. Because a lot of people are going to look at the tags and it'll say, like, uh, oh, date of birth was so-and-so 1994, so it must have been made in that year, and that's not true. Right. Um, and then the other tag will say, like, 1993, and that's not true either. And so that's why we have the tag generations to really show right. how old they are. Um, because uh, if we're going to use Valentino as the example, I'll show it in my chart here. Um, it was released January of 95, um, had a very short run as a Gen 2, mm -hmm. the skinny tie letters, and then it switched to the Gen 3 for a while, which is still worth a bit, and then we get into the more common ones. And the reason that the older ones are worth more isn't only because they're old, it's because nobody collected them at that point, and so right. there's fewer of them out there, tie wasn't overproducing to meet the demands... And the people who did buy them gave them away as gifts or gave them to their kids or whatever and didn't keep them in a acrylic case and leave it untouched. So, like, when you find them, they're not going to be in good shape most of the time. That's exactly and, right. You're not going to find mint ones. And with it being a white beanie, they're right. always dirty, dusty, something. Right, and so it's like you have all these factors to look into. We don't need to worry about PVC. We don't need to worry about the errors. And then people will make stuff up, like they'll have a they'll like they'll pull a Valentino out of their storage, and it's just a normal Gen Four or whatever. But then they'll look online and see, okay, how much is this going for? And you'll always see the people who are pointing out the brown nose and <laughs> like, okay, so it's like we'll see. Mine is special. Mine is worth twenty thousand dollars because mine has a brown nose and it's supposed to be black. And mine has, uh, the one tag says 1993 and the other says 94. It's a mismatch yep. error. And it says uh, KR, which means it's Korean. Mm -hmm. And it's like they point out all these things. And if you don't know any better and if you don't bother to look at any other sales, then you might think that that's true. But then you take right. five seconds, look at literally any other one on eBay, and it's going to have those exact same details because... It always has a brown nose. It always has the the KR. Like, it's just... It's stupid. I blame Google for a lot of this because... I do. Because these sites, you know, with the clickbait, were able to get this information out there, this false information out there, and create this whole thing. And all of us who have legitimate websites with legitimate information, we're ranked way down compared to these other sites because we don't get the traffic that they do yeah because, because I mean, you yeah. don't you don't put out the uh your beanies might be worth thousands click here right. to find out why because yeah. like if you That's did like, that then people would come to the site and then it'd be like oh sorry they're actually not right <laughs> like, i mean you're gonna you people naturally just human nature they're gonna click on one that says hey your beanie's worth 50 grand they're not gonna click on one that says hey your beanie might be worth five dollars yeah 
you know, and there are rare BDs, and it's so sad that the ones that are rare are getting no attention. Yeah, it's like I mean I've said before, like I I know the first five generations. There's about like two hundred eighteen ish by my count, plus the variants. And but it's like you count all the ones released after that. There's like three thousand of them. Right. And of those, there's plenty of them that are rare, and I wouldn't know it if I saw it. If I, like, just what was it like last week or the week before that person found the chef Robichon at the yeah, thrift that's store? Fantastic. Like, yeah, it's like the the rarest beanie that if it was in yeah. mint condition would be worth like six seven thousand dollars. That's right. But there it is, sitting in a bag at a thrift store. It didn't have its tag. It was like. It didn't have the code on it, so it's not worth that much. But still, there's very few of them out there. And it's like, you'd never know, because you don't see those talked about. Right. Like, I mean, that one kind of is, but... It's just, like, you always see people talking about Claude and Snort, and, like, these are just... You see thousands of these, but you... Well, you think about we've got what is it about 500 people who we approve for the group every single week and out of that 500 we might have 0.01 percent that's a collector and out of the rest who are sellers um we'll have maybe two percent that has something worthwhile 98% 98% have all these beanies that you're seeing right here all the time. All the ones being mentioned. All the Gen 4 and 5. That's all the Gen 4 and 5. That's what everybody has. And even when you sit there and you tell them that, they don't look through. Because if they did, they'd see it's the same thing right. every single day. I don't. It's That's the thing I don't get is why like people are just like, oh, I have Claude. I read it's like one of the top five rarest. And it's like, okay, if you think it's that rare, scroll down this page for five minutes. You're going to see 20 people that have it. Like, yes. Now let's name off a beanie that actually is where, like, it is hard to find. Like, Webb, you're going to see, like, either none of those or maybe one listed at a high price. Right. And th- there's a reason for that. <sighs> it's like, it really just comes down to, like, rare things are rare, common things aren't. It's It well, shouldn't it, need that much of an explanation. <laughs> it shouldn't. But, you know, it's not just our hobby that this has happened to. It's it's happening in all different kinds of hobbies and i don't know it's it's really sad um i know you always mention the the black diamond disney tapes and that stuff like i've seen articles on those too and those are ridiculous yeah they've got it going on with pokemon too now and then the latest are these uh i think it's pyrex dishes um or casseroles and stuff and the ones that they they're trying to say that some of the more common ones are worth in the thousands and it's the same type thing with ours you know you'll go look and you'll see one sold for ten thousand dollars but it's a fake sale mm. um i've fallen for it with some dolls i was all excited because i thought i found a rare one because when i went and i pulled it up on uh, uh ebay i sorted highest to lowest which you should never do and it was it, i think it showed like it fifteen hundred two thousand dollars and when i got home i went to uh one a group and it was like nope <laughs> it's worth like twenty dollars yeah that's how it is which is what i paid for it so <laughs> and so yeah it's like just that that's the thing that that's the thing with the beanies is like you're never going to be able to look at one and just automatically be able to know okay, this is Trap the Mouse. This one's rare. Like, you're not going to just know that. You have to know some stuff about it. And you so, do. like, that, the tag generations definitely help. But then you also get the opposite end of it where it's like people will say everything that's a Gen 4 is common. And it's like 98% of them are, but there are some good ones. There and are so some. The yep. solution to this is either do a ton of research or just get the guide and use that because it's helpful. Like It just answers everything just, on immediately. Instead of just then, assuming. Yeah, and then, you know, if you want to jump into the hobby um, and you want to sell, you got to learn your counterfeits, too. And the counterfeits, you know, they're on their first, second, third gens primarily. And it, they're everywhere. On any given day, you can go to eBay and you will find more counterfeit traps than you will real. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, kind of just sad. to uh just to look at real briefly at my timeline again here like again, this this is something like i i put this together just by kind of combining information that i found from a bunch of sources comparing 
everything together, making sure it's all accurate. Um, and it's so it's like when we're talking about the old rare ones, like here's trap on here, like this one stopped production like midway through 1995, which was way before they started getting popular. So of course that one's going to be rarer than right. something like let, let's look at Blackie because people always mention that one. It's like night and day with this one. The Gen One Blackie is like what two thousand dollars. Gen and, One Blackie, that is like a uh, what do they call it? A unicorn? Yeah, it's, it's for a lot of your high end collectors. It's um, that first Gen Blackie was just like impossible to get in mint condition. Yeah, so it's like we're uh, talking about this one. It's this this first one's just worth a crazy amount of money, and then it gets progressively less money. It got like probably yeah. probably a few hundred for the Gen Two, maybe like fifty for Gen Three or so, and then once yeah, we get to this point, five bucks. It's the same thing with just... Fine Main Mystic. If you can find a mint first gen Fine Main Mystic, fifteen hundred, two thousand, no problem from a high end collector. So, but then you get to your third gen Fine Main Mystic, and yeah, it's like know. thirty bucks, <laughs> like well, maybe a little bit more than that, but yeah. So yeah, right, it's, it's all the generation and rarity. It's like you have to know how long it was in production for. You have to oh. know what your specific one, like when that one came from. Like, you can just take a glance at the tag and know, okay, this is an older one. It's probably worth more. Like, and then you can kind of go from there. But it's like just because a Gen 1 Blackie is going to be worth that much money doesn't mean that the later one is going to just because it's the same beanie. Right. So, and I think that's probably what we're getting into with the original nine here. So let's yep. let's continue. People have the original nine. Platy the Pat. Patty the platypus. That's not the original. Pinchers the nope. lobster. No. Chocolate nope. the moose. Nope. Legs the frog. A lot nope. of them. And these particular nine in a group were important. So those aren't the only ones that are important. You also want to look for gobbles, the turkey. Oh. You also want to look <laughs> I have no for idea why she's asking. And Mr. Okay, so I was... Okay, hold on. I've got words for that. But um, before we... Uh, I, I thought she was going to talk more about the original nine there. Apparently not. That was just a little drive-by mm -hmm. mentioning and then we're done. Um, so yeah, that's more of the same. Just the original nine, like, yeah, the old ones are worth a lot. The old ones are worth a lot. The new ones are not so much. And that's just the same with almost anything. It's got to be um, a first-gen swing tag with a four-line Korea tush tag to be a true original nine. Yeah, I'll show that on here. We've got a picture of them, too, on uh, the website under original nine. Yeah, I'm trying to, I actually have the, uh, I have my cubby slash brownie with the four line tush, but I was trying to find one on the website. Here we go. Yeah, it's, um, depending on who you're talking to, some people are going to be more or less picky. Um, so original nine can just refer to these particular nine beanies in any state, any generation, but it's meaningless when you're talking about the later ones because they're not special. It can right. refer to just the gen one versions. Or it can refer to specifically the Gen 1 versions with this tag that is only four lines instead of five. Yeah, those and, are your two originals. And this picture that I'm showing right now, this is a like super rare UK exclusive tag. There's like only a few dozen of these in existence. So that's that's a whole other thing unto itself. But uh, yeah, that's that's the other thing is people are like, oh, I've got Patty. It's I know this one's rare. It's like, no, you have a Gen 4 Patty. There's millions of those. <laughs> There's a big difference. And... Uh, Patty was my favorite beanie. That's what. Um, that's why I've documented them. Right. Yeah. And I always, I always think it's, it's funny showing Patty to people who don't know the hobby because it's like I've got the picture of the four different versions here. And it's like the deep fuchsia and the fuchsia look like ninety nine percent the same, other than the tag. And I'm like, okay, so this one over here, this one's five dollars. This one's, you know, like fifteen hundred. And they're like, wait, why? <laughs> like, it's the it, same it, thing. It, it is. <laughs> it's, like... it's hard. Um, when you see them in person, though, and you line them all up, you can see it with your eye. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like people really overthink Patty because, totally. like, you'll, you'll see the ones who are like, well, I mean, I don't know the difference between magenta and fuchsia. How are you supposed to know? And fair point, but the trick is look at the tag. It's the same as anything else. Like, yeah. after you look at the tag, if you have an older one, then you can worry about the color. But chances are you're not going to need to. Well, like so. if you have a third gen um, patty and you've got an inch, if the color of the purple on inches 
tail matches the color of Patty, you've got a fuchsia. Right. So I'll there's that you. trick. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, because it's like you've got the yeah the fuchsia is the same color as inch, and then you've got the raspberry magenta, which are pretty similar, but the magenta is more red. Um, yeah, brighter. You mentioned the squarish beak on that one too. I do you know, see that I, in the picture. Yeah, you can see, you can tell. It's really and weird. I've, how that every single one I've ever found has uh, had that same shape beak, so or bill. But yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, don't worry about it unless you have a Gen three or older. If you do, exactly. then you can look into the specifics. But if you've got a four or a five, it's not going to be. It doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Like. Keep it in your collection. It's not worthless, but it's it's three bucks. Like <laughs> anyway, okay. I think we're talking about fleece here. And magic and scorch. Oh, actually, no. I'm sorry. I forgot because she mentioned mystic. Let me go back and hold on. Let me hear that again. Only ones that are important. You also want to look for gobbles, the turkey. No, you don't. You also want to look for, of course, fleece and mystic Why? and magic and scorch. Okay, so let's let's take a second here because I, I have a particular issue with her mentioning Mystic because in the original video that I like found of her like reviewing people's collections, she uh, uttered the line, uh, your unicorns don't collect very well, which baffles me. I don't know what that was meant to mean, but like... Oh, so she mentions it there, but now all of a sudden... Yeah, because she's like she's looking through the, the stuff, and she's just like, oh, you know, you've got this, like, the Santa but... beanie, it's not, it's a holiday one, those people don't care about those, your unicorns don't collect very well, but here we have Claude the Crab, that's a popular one, and it's like, it's like, no. It's all about the money. No. And so that, and that's another thing, like, Mystic, it's like almost every other one I've been talking about today, early generations tons of money later ones not, not so really much. any mm -mm. like it went through four even different some versions of the variations, even some of the variations you know they they're not worth yeah it's more it, it, i mean it, this, this one is almost entirely the tag because it's like gen 4 had the tan horn and then gen 5 you've got the shiny horn and then there's like the rainbow man there's three different versions they're all worth like the same amount they're all right. five bucks but then when you get to the Gen 3, now you're talking about at least 50. And it's like, you don't even need to worry about, like, what type of main it has until you are looking at that older tag. Like, that should always you know, be it, the first thing you look at. And it's funny because for collectors, like, my favorite version of Mystic is the uh, Rainbow Main. I mean, it is the prettiest one. Yeah, that's my favorite version. Like, the older Doesn't ones are a little bit a dull, but yeah, they're just... Those are the first ones, so they're worth more. Yeah. So yeah, she mentioned magic and scorch. I'm not gonna get caught up on every little thing she says, but yeah, we don't no. need to worry about those. I don't yet. know why she mentions gobbles. Because for some reason, gobbles is in all the top ten lists, and I don't know yep, why. Yeah, so she can make money on it. Yeah, I mean, th that's the other thing that bugs me is uh, even like Ty themselves have kind of fanned the flames on some of this with uh, the stupid Beanie Buddy tags. Because like the the one for gobbles says like it could be made with either a single or a double felt waddle, and then like I don't think anybody ever cared about that until recently, and now suddenly that's like a big thing. A thing, but you know what's funny is Ty didn't even realize that they had done that until a collector back then noticed it. Yeah, because it's like we've got the. Uh... Like, there's so many weird variations that are tracked um, in the old magazines and in the price guide, yeah. like the hot pink magic. Like, that is, right. that one, I have a particular <laughs> issue with I hot pink you, magic. It's I look at it and I can see that hot pink just. I mean, I can it see it. It's just, it's such a small, stupid thing to actually worry about because it's like, <laughs> in one breath, we'll tell people, like, Oh, your beanie's nose is a little bit crooked. Like that's whatever. It's not an, it's not anything. Oh, but then this one, the the shade of pink on this thread is marginally darker. So yeah, this one's worth like fifty bucks. It's like <laughs> from an outside perspective, I can see the you hypocrisy. You can get it, yeah. But that's how <laughs> but, crazy uh, we were, you know. Yeah, but it's like we've got that one. So that one counts. But then the uh, the double thing on gobbles doesn't. But to be fair, that one's probably a lot more common. Like, I did buy one of those. It wasn't hard to find. 
But yeah, the, the, those top 10 and 20 lists are so dumb. It's just the same ones over and over. And it's and that's, never just anything interesting. I can't even say it. They're just regurgitating the same thing over and over and adding more bullshit is what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, Okay, let's try and get through this video. <laughs> you knew you, I wouldn't get through this without at least one curse word. Yeah, that's fine with me. And magic and scorch, a lot of those that relate to mythology. So in groups, they can be very valuable too. How much do they sell for? They can sell for into the twenty to forty dollar range. They can sell into the well into the thousands. No, no, and it no they can't. On many factors. <laughs> Where were they made? Is there a stamp inside the tag? Oh boy. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't expect to get into this one. All right, let me bust out my timeline again. <laughs> oh, go, Josh. <laughs> okay, so people love mentioning this tag. So, or uh, the stamp and the tag. So let me let me find a picture of one. Okay, so here's the red stag. The red stag. The red stamp inside the tag. If you look up any badly researched website, it's gonna say this stamp indicates mass production. And if it doesn't have it, then it was before they started doing that, and it means it's rare. That is absolutely not true. So we already established earlier that the switch from the Gen 3 to 4 in the middle of 96 is pretty much when they started becoming more common. There's still some rare ones in, like, 96, but not all of them, only some. Then at the uh, start of 98, February, we have the switch to PVC pellets, or, sorry, the switch from PV from PVC to PE pellets, which also doesn't really matter. And then we jump forward a few more months to around June, and that's when we have the tush tag stamp. And so um, if we look at my chart here and look at the amount of time that passed from the start of the common era up to the start of when the stamp started showing up, here's this whole big range that uh, apparently we're supposed to care about because they don't have the stamp. <laughs> but no. That doesn't ma that doesn't matter at all. <laughs> so, it, like, for some reason, we know it matters on peace because um, people are crazy with peace. Yeah, because we were crazy peace. How many before. how many peace do you have? Um, at one point I had well over a thousand. Now I've got just probably a couple hundred. Okay, I've got the uh, twenty four that you sent me, and then like yeah. another eight, but. Uh, I, well, I started buying them again. I mean, I just can't quit. I don't know. But yeah, um, so P peace is a whole other enigma unto it itself. If she mentions peace, we might get into that, but other, it won't be here for be hours. So, um, but yeah, as far as that stamp goes, it whether something has it or doesn't is utterly irrelevant. It tells you if it was made before or after June 1998. And what that information does to correlate to value is absolutely nothing. And if, I see one with the stamp, and I just I see mass produced. Well, that's the thing. Like, if it has the stamp, it's most likely mass produced. Right. But then, you you can't look at that as the inverse also being true. That doesn't mean that if it doesn't have it, that it's rare. And that's where people that get hung true. up. That is true. That is true. That's where people have to kind of realize there's a little bit more. Like I keep saying the word finesse. I don't know the right word for it, but it's like. Just because X is true doesn't mean that the opposite of X isn't. It's it's like with any other hobby, the devil's in the details, um, right. and it's not always just real easy. Um, it takes a little bit of education to learn how this whole thing works. Yeah, and so and so with the stamp again, the, the, it only shows up on the Gen Six Tush Tag. It's it's not on the seven or eight, which are the holographic ones. Um, it's only on the Chinese ones, never the Indonesians, and it's only after June ninety eight. And so, like, if you have one, it's like great. We know when it was made. That doesn't help. <laughs> Each tush tag tells you information that you need. Never rip off the tush tags. Make sure that they are stored in in particular elements that are in fact plastic and containers that won't trap any odors. They shouldn't smell of pets. They shouldn't smell of smoke. And if they weren't handled. In the 1990s, the families actually who were collecting Beanie Babies, these folks would keep them as if they were collectibles. It wasn't like the kids were going to play with them an awful long time. 
So you would actually see that these Beanie Babies would in fact be held up like other collectibles. They became the collectibles Which is why that they didn't you would hold have value. with grandma. That right, because everybody with had them. Or with your parents. Parents in this time period also wanted to have a friendship relationship with their kids. So in the 1990s, you saw a lot of that, of parents trying to be friends. And you're seeing, again, the way in which Marketing. the market used that. The market also used what was happening on places like the Internet. The market also used a lot of this idea of turning its back on violence. This is why many of the toys what? of the What Nintendo are you talking popular. about? Like Elmo, who was always smiling, right? Like the Boyd's Bears, that also became the type of collectible where Dr. Laurie could collect says. those particular types of petty, pet, teddy bears. But the Beanie Babies you really want to see for their condition been and home for too the long. creativity <laughs> of these particular ones. You know, you had things like the turtle named Speedy. Cute little name. Lol. As well as the idea of birthdays. A lot of people collected Beanie Babies because that particular Beanie Baby would have their birthday. So, so my what, they collected January one? January 11th, I would collect the Beanie <laughs> Baby that had the same birthday. A lot of people collected that way. A lot of people collected, if they liked farm animals, they would get Daisy the cow, for example, or maybe Dot or Dottie, the, um, uh, the, the dog. Maybe you would like Rover, Red Rover, of course, based on, of course, the, the elementary school game. So lots of things huh? that you're seeing, but the background, the history, uh, the culture, and if you learn the culture, the history, the background of any antique or collectible, remember, I'm the PhD antiques appraiser, <laughs> you're going to be able to know okay, what's going so, to be So about. her PhD is in art history, right? That's what I believe. Yeah, let me go look it up. Just because, so like, that's the thing is, like, she's she's not a dumb person. She knows no, she's a not. lot of things. She just doesn't know beanies, and she needs to stop acting like she does know beanies because it's a dangerous combination when you have someone who is confident about their ability and then just doesn't succeed at it. <laughs> I don't know. It's just. <laughs> You know, we both know she is not dumb. It's just she uh, she's going for the money is what it is. And so here, here's something that I actually wanted to bring up. It's like, so you've mentioned that uh, nobody in the hobby knew who she was until like a couple of years ago. Yeah. And so that in itself doesn't necessarily mean anything because like if, if I if if I look at like the where I kind of came into this, like I'm not an expert, but I know a fair amount and it's like i only kind of came in a couple of years ago and so people can learn she just kind of doesn't want to <laughs> it's you know you can learn but you know this is the same lady how she came into this was business insider yeah. used her as their expert on well you've seen the video it's just not there yeah, anymore I but you can pull it, it when the they video. found out that what she said was not true and they came to us. You know, Business Insider came to the Beanie Babies Price Guide, and we explained how things work, and they pulled uh, her video and article. I'm still surprised so, they did that. Because she was wrong. Yeah. But she, they are the only ones who've done anything to correct um, all the false statements out there. Uh, yeah, it looks like she it looks like her PhD is in art and architectural history. Okay, and so like that's that's related to antiques, but it's it has nothing to do with beanies. Like you can't no. you cannot have a PhD in stuffed animals. No. So like I, I don't I don't get the the correlation there. Well, what is like, what's that old saying? Um, it, where, where you know a little bit about everything, but you're a master of none. What is it? You, uh, just uh, the jack of all trades, master of jack none. of all trades, yeah. master of none, and that's kind of is just because you're an appraiser doesn't mean that you know everything. You can't. Yeah, no one's gonna know everything. No, no one but... is. I don't know art and architectural history at all. All right, let's see if we can get through this. Valuable. What's going to be valuable coming forward? You're gonna be able to spot that. It's all about knowing how the history is. Everybody knew that the that the I Princess agree. Diana the history of is of is important. You're just ignoring if it. If you knew how to gauge and evaluate the market, 
which is what a lot of people don't do. They're just looking at listings, and that's not always the best place. As the expert, you can't just look at a listing and the say expert. your baby is worth that. You can't always look at a tag or an error and say, oh, they had an error, and they say the error's important, or they say the error's not, and believe these sources. A lot of these people are not experts. A lot of these people are not the sources that you want to rely on. But when it comes to Beanie Babies, you really need to remember condition. You need to make sure that the tags are intact. So, oh, I have the tag, but it fell off. No, has to be on the animal. And where it's placed needs to be on meant. the animal is very important. Like with Rainbow and Iggy, the iguanas and the chameleons, basically, if you have a tag, it matters whether or not it's on the felt razorback or oh. on a paw. Oh, this is where I told you she's been reading. Area. It matters where the tag was actually placed. That's a very specific thing to get hung up on. Okay. See, that's why I told you she's been reading. But and just not we're the reading only, the important parts. We're the only ones who go into that, and we're the ones linked to on those Iggy Rainbow things. Right. Um, but but then, she's getting hung up on tag placement, and that's not it. That's the thing. It's like, okay, so here's the article. It's, oh, hold on, let me pull it up. Um, it's like, okay, so we have the different versions, and then there's the part that says that uh, the tag can be connected to either the foot or the spine. Let me see where it says that. Okay, yeah, here we go. So yeah, the first version has it on the foot, the second version has it on the spine, then we've got the one with the tongue, then we've got the blue one on the spine, blue one on the foot. So yeah, it did change a few times, but uh, it doesn't matter at all. No. And if you look further down in the article, it says pricing. Are any versions worth more than the other? And it's like, no, not really. It's like, it says right here, this is how much they're worth. Like, not, not very much. No. There is no part of this article that says if it's attached to the spine or the foot, it's worth more. Mm -mm. The only time I've seen one go a little higher, say like $35, $40, is when you get Neons. one that's like those screaming reds, you know, on on it. I've seen... Um, Usually the tongue seen... diggy, right? That's the one that yeah. has the most variation. Yeah, yeah. I've seen those. Uh, I mean, we're talking like maybe once or twice a year go you know 35 40 dollars because one with just insane colors comes out yeah and i mean that's going to be the case with a lot of the tie dyes but exactly. that's also not hundreds or thousands no. which is what the articles no. always say because that that's the, like everyone's always like oh the original ones had the wrong colors and it was a big mistake and they're super rare like no the, the mistakes like, were for like eight months <laughs> i just feel like like she's contributing to getting people's hopes up only to be crushed like, and it just it's to me it's so sad Oof. yeah that was a really weird detail to point out there. yeah if the tag is dog-eared it matters if the tag is first generation second generation oh. third generation all of this matters but don't explain that's it though why i like people to know the truth about their beanie babies and about what the value really is Yes, they can have significant value, but I wanted you to understand why they are so valuable, and it has to do with their Well, value. you haven't really helped. What's happening in the no. culture then? So, you know, we have the McDonald's culture and the minivan culture. She's and, just hyping you know, it. The 90s soccer interests. We, we little kids. mentioned a few like times that Fleece is worth a thousand. So I still haven't gotten an explanation on that one. Still so collectible. I'm Dr. Lori. I hope this helped you learn a little bit more about Beanie Babies and why they're so valuable. See you next time. Yeah. Okay. No, so that was it. not so much. You no. talked a lot about violence in the 90s and a bunch of irrelevant stuff, but okay. Uh-huh. So, yeah. The, uh, she mentioned a couple times in there, just kind of casually, oh, this one here, yeah, this is a thousand bucks. And then never went into detail on it. No. And that's it, that, that's odd to me because... It's getting people's hopes up is what it's doing. I, I want to know what the end game here is because like, e e even if a bunch of people start believing all this and like are like, okay, all this information that she's saying is true. These are worth a lot. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like buy up all the ones I can and sell them back for more. Like the only people who would buy them for more are the people who also believe it and they're never going to be able to sell them back for hire. So like, where is this going? Okay. For her, it's about the money because if she gets people thinking that something is worth that and she gets people hyped up about it, they will pay her um, to do 
you know, her, let me, let's go over to her website because she charges various amounts. I, I know that she offers the, uh, the like personalized appraisals. She does. She and does. I, I always hear this stuff about like every time you have stuff looked at, there's always something that comes back that's at least $50. Like almost every time it's like it, she has to justify, um, yeah. the expense, but, and she also has here that like if her antique's not worth if your antique's not worth fifty nine dollars, then she tells you the value at no charge. And if that's the case, everything has to be valued about that, or mm. she'd be given nothing but free appraisals. Right. But you know she's got all these. That's where it is for her. It's the money. And right now, there's a lot of interest in beanies. Everybody thinks that. I mean, we see it in the group. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, there's more people coming in every yeah. day, and they're always asking the same stuff. It's the and, same thing over and over. So think about, and we're seeing more and more people who've gone to her. So uh, she's making some bank. But yeah, those those lists online are just they're so bizarre because they really just kind of throw darts and pick which ones are considered rare. Like the one that I the one that always annoyed me the most was Claude because there's just there's nothing special about that one. Nothing at all. But it's like fleece is basically the same thing like she's saying oh this one's worth a lot and never said why and it's because there isn't a reason why it came out during a time when they were common it was made for two years it doesn't have any variations any notable errors like the error you know the light at the end of the tunnel is that they should be about out of beanies (laughs) well yeah well yeah because eventually every single one of them is going to be considered rare exactly i did a video once where i was just like let me pick let me pick one at random that i've never heard anything about look it up on ebay and see if it says it has errors and i picked stilts the stork and it comes back like oh oh my god five errors and like like, okay what are the errors and of course they never explain them (laughs) it's just crazy but yeah, with the- well, I like I, li- I like how uh, some people now in the group are asking people when they say, "Oh, it's got rare errors and blah blah." It's blah. like, okay, what are they? What are they? And they don't. Yeah, they, they never think of any. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah, it's if sad. You had a, if like, you had a Valentino that had like it's it like if you had a fortune or whatever that was missing the heart, that's considered an oddity, and that yeah. would be worth more. That's but that's about the only example I can think of. Yeah, that's that's the thing is like she kind of vaguely touched on like oh there are errors that don't matter and there are ones that do and she said like the the like original with two eyes doesn't matter and it's like yes correct good you're you're debunking that one myth now what else have you got and then she kind of didn't really say anything else but the th- like that's the thing with the errors though is it's like most of the things that people say are errors just aren't anyway Right. Because you've got the ones who are like, oh, there's a missing period after this, or this is supposed to be a comma, but it's not, or the, there's an extra space here, or if you hold up a micro, like hold it up to a microscope, there's like this extra little blot of ink here. Like, it's crazy. Like, and it's just like, okay, if we're getting into English teacher territory, we're not, we're looking too hard. That's the thing with the with beanies is, is everything is kind of a case by case basis because. Everybody wants the simple answer of what do I look at to tell if it's worth something. If it doesn't have it, throw it in the heap and move on to the next one. And you just, you can't really do that. You can't. Because, like, on some beanies you've got the, like, words misspelled in the poem. And it's like, oh, well, they're almost all like that. That's fine. But then you've got the ones where it has it. And it's like, okay, that one is rare. That one's probably worth, like, maybe 50 bucks. And you'd never know unless you look at a reputable list. And it's it's very easy to and, see why people get so confused. Yeah, it's there's a lot of stuff, and then you then you get the very the, the small markets like the Koreans and the uh, the Indonesian Canadian combo ones. Um, right. Where it's like if you can find someone to buy it, then yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be worth more than usual, but it's not gonna be easy. So. I think that might have covered about everything that she had to say. I don't know. Yeah, she did. It was a very brief thing that she did this time. Just annoying. Out of that 15 minutes, I think she had like maybe five minutes of information. (laughs) Exactly. It's it's, like I said, it's one of those things where she's just luring people in. And that's, you know me, that's the, that's kind of the thing that just irritates me to all get out. It just does. I don't like people taking advantage of other people. Yeah, no, I definitely don't either. Um. Anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? I can't think of anything. 
Yeah. I don't. That's fine. I guess we'll go ahead and end it here then. Um, I know people have expressed interest in uh, just having more videos of us just kind of talking about subjects. You and I, when we sit there and we just talk, we do really well, I think, because we have a lot of the same interest. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm interested in doing more of those. We'll have to, yeah, we'll have to some pick some subjects and just go through yeah. them. Yeah, let's do some of that. We ought to do a peace one. Yeah, we could go on about that one for a while. What could we? <laughs> All right. That one's well, insane. I guess we'll okay. go ahead and be done then. So uh, until next time, I don't have a closing statement. Bye. Okay. <laughs>